Manga animation is now possible inside DaVinci Resolve. That's right, this can be you one day. And I recently found out that all this was possible after speaking to one of the manga animation goats themselves. Now, they are on After Effects, but after doing some translating, all you need are two main tools to make animations like these. The only reason why you don't see stuff like this is because nobody else is covering it on YouTube. There are new methods that release in DaVinci Resolve 20 that you probably don't know about that will bring you to this skill level. I also cover a little bit of manga compositing inside of DaVinci Resolve, so just stick to the end of the video and you will learn- you will learn pretty much everything there is to know about the basics of manga compositing. Also, this whole tutorial was filmed in one take, clips from a coaching session I had on Discord, so I was actively teaching someone as I recorded this. If you want editing lessons from me, just shoot me a message on Discord, I will respond. <laughs> Anyways, lock in, let's get into it. The first step is getting the manga panels, and it helps a lot to source them in the highest quality possible. Some good resources are bato.to or mangaberry.com. I'm sourcing some manga panels from the latest chapters of Dragon Ball Super. So let me go over here, search up Dragon Ball Super, go on any panel, right click, save it bitch as, and I got a JPEG right here. If you already have a plug for getting high quality manga panels, just use that. I need you to do is join my Discord server and go down to the AI software tab and go grab Topaz Photo AI. Once that is opened up, get your manga panel and drag and drop it into the photo AI. Just give that a second to process. Click on add enhancement, upscale, and I'm gonna upscale it by 2X. Doesn't have to be too intense. It's already high quality enough. And I'm gonna crank up fixed compression and a minor D blur and D noise. That looks good. All right, so in this case, for this manga panel, it looks good with graphics mode turned on and minor denoise cranked up a fairly decent amount so if these settings work for you good if they don't then you might have to tweak them around anyway export the image and i'm going to save this as beerus all right now let's load up davinci all right so now i'm in davinci uh first step is just get a fusion composition drag it down there and drag in your manga panel and i'm going to make a new bin called pre-comps because we're going to be pre-comping a lot. So let's go into the fusion composition by pressing F or if you don't have my keybinds, just right click on it and click open in fusion page, drag the manga panel in there. And now we have some cleaning up to do. So I purposely searched for a manga panel that has a very simple background. That way I can easily get a 3D keyer and just pee out all the color and that's a very easy and simple way to get the character but obviously not all manga panels are simple like this and if you're dealing with a black and white page it's going to end up looking like that so in cases where if you can't key out the character easily or if magic mask doesn't work here i'm gonna give it a try here i mean it, it did okay but like Let's be honest, this looks pretty bad. If you want the best, highest quality possible result, you're gonna have to suck it up, grab a polygon node, drag it into the gray input of Mac control, and just get to masking. Then, I'm gonna go to the garbage mat and click on invert. Now we have our soloed out manga panel. All right, so once you're satisfied with the manga panel that you cut out, just make sure the edges look clean and then grab a crop node, go to auto crop and everything should be automatically cropped nicely. And now we're gonna be doing something called pre-comping. If you're familiar with After Effects, it's pretty much gonna be grouping all the work that we did and then saving it as an image file. And this will just help later down the line so things don't lag. So in Fusion, the quickest way to do this is just right click and click save image. Place the name the file, whatever you want. So Beerus pre-comp one, and then save it as a PNG. And you know what, just for organizational purposes, I'm gonna make a folder called pre-comp and just put it in there. Next, press R for loader, click on your pre-comp and you should have the pre-comp now saved in this loader node. So for cleaning up speech bubbles, there's an easy way and there's a hard way. Easy way is getting a paint node and setting it to stroke mode right here. Make sure you click this button. If you don't, then it's gonna mess up. So make sure you click it and hold alt and click around the text and then just paint over it. There you go, just magically disappears. The harder way is to get a matte control, another polygon node, making a quick mask around the text, and then adding a clean plate node, another polygon, 
putting another quick mask around it and then setting the clean plate to ranges and fill. And then for any additional cleanups, add another matte control node and get a mask paint node, connect that to the gray input and just slowly paint away. Oh, make sure you have it on stroke mode and slowly paint it. Why does it not work? Wait, okay. So uh, then you wanna just slowly go at the image and paint away the parts that you don't really want. So I'm just gonna paint away these lines over here. And I just want to clean it up so it eventually looks good during the compositing process. Now that I have my cleaned up image, I'm going to right click again, save image, and I'm going to name it as precomp2 clean and save that as a PNG file. Get another loader node and get that precomp in there. And now for the hardest part of this whole process, masking out every single body part. Okay, so before we get to animating, we got to determine what parts we want to move first. So obviously I want his eyes to open. I want his mouth to move a little bit and I kind of want to like animate his head like looking down and then like tilting up or whatever. So I'm going to have to paint out the eyes and the mouth and a little bit of his facial details on here. So we're going to have to animate all these parts. And then I also want his tail to move. So I got to mask that out. And you just want to make sure you have like a rough plan of like everything that you're going to mask out because bring in the paint note again set it to stroke mode hold alt on the nearest pixel closest to where you want to paint out and then just drag over and if you're on a black and white manga page you got it even easier you can just paint it white and click on your pre-comp layer duplicate it and then get a matte control now make sure you have a lot of space here because we're going to be making a lot of masks. So get a multi-merge, drag the paint node into the yellow input of the multi-merge, grab your matte control, put it into the white input polygon node, and put that on the grape input of the matte control. And I'm going to start masking over the eyes. Okay, then I'm going to hit invert. All right, that's the first eye. I'm going to paste again, matte control, polygon, same thing, the left eye. And just for organizational purposes, I'm going to group all these together. This is the left eye, so I'm going to highlight all of them, press Control G, then F2, and type in left eye. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the right eye, Control G, F2, right eye, plug that into the multi-merge, and then preview it. So pretty much, you're going to have to mask out the parts that you paint out and put them back on top. And I forgot to remove the tail, so I'm going to get another Mac Control Polygon node and just mask very precisely on this outline. So when I animate the tail moving around, it's going to make sense. It's going to look good. And now I've reconstructed everything. So when I previewed the multi-merge node, it should be, it should look exactly like how it is in the pre-comp. And if I go back and forth, did forget one thing and it's that little thing in the bottom of his chin. So let me get that real quick. So now once everything is reconstructed, put a warper node after every single group and then click the multi merge again and add a warper node after it and then set that warper node to points mode. Now for the blinking animations, since this character doesn't really have super defined eyelids, it's fairly easy for me to do the blinking animation all i have to do is just warp his eye down and then make it black when he's blinking but for more detailed eyelids you're gonna have to mask out the eyelid and animate that going down and back up but the steps are relatively the same so pretty much what you want to do is make sure the warper is in curves mode and the less points the better you just want to make a sort of like a box ish shape you just want to follow the general shape of the of the thing on the screen and just adjust the points so they're as close as possible to the shape like that. And then click warp and begin to slowly chisel at it until it is in a blinking position. So I'm just going to keep smushing it and smushing it. I don't want to over smush it. So something like that. Okay. And that's pretty flat. Then I'm going to get a brightness contrast node, plug the warper into the blue input of that and drag this slider all the way down over here so it's black keyframe it go like two frames forward so it's keyframe on frame zero let's go to like frame 14 
and warp this all the way back. If I want to make it go back down and blink, what I like doing is having the eye slightly go down almost halfway and then instantly jump to being closed. And every single time it's closed, I'm keyframing the brightness and contrast. So at its most smushed point, it just turns black. And if you just want to copy this along, like if you want to have your character keep blinking, you have to be wary of when the warp strength is on zero. So you got to highlight the keyframe where it's on zero like that hold control and you can just drag it over so i can have him blink whenever pretty much and i can hold alt to manipulate the timing of it along the graph yeah something like that looks pretty good you can just have fun with it with the keyframes and pretty much you want to do the same thing for the right eye but instead of doing your keyframes all over again just worry about getting the box and we're just going to use an expression so we link this eye to the left eye okay so now so right click on warp strength click connect to warper one and warp strength and now when i preview the multi-merge we should have a nice blinking animation it might look a little bit ugly at first but trust me once we get to the compositing phase and we have the motion blur and all the camera movement working at the same time you just make a bounding box around it the less points the better and you just either smush it down or animate it however you want so i want it to look like his mouth is opening up so i'm just gonna smush it down and uh yeah that pretty much looks good enough for me so i'm gonna wait like 20 frames and have it go out like that same with the nose the nose barely moves at all but if i want to have it look like if his head is moving gotta drag it down just a little bit so something like that. Wait 20 frames again. Keyframe it down. Get a J curve graph. Okay, now we're on the tail. So with the tail, there's two ways we could do this. We could manually, we could manually take a transform node and adjust the pivot point so it's kind of at the corner of the tail. And we can move the angle around so the tail's just moving like that. Or and I'm not sure if this will look good in this instance, but this also works for hair. Uh, you could put Sapphire Warp Bubble on it and turn down the frequency a good amount. And you can just adjust the shift start and the shift speed. As long as the amplitude is pretty low, you can have a nice subtle animation with that. And that looks pretty good, but it is showing on top. So I got to make sure that um, goes down on the bottom like behind his clothes. The easiest way to get that done is by making another mat control and dragging the line from uh, the painted out version, dragging that all the way down to the gray input and that should hide it behind his tail just like that. And just to make things look a little bit neater, I'm gonna go into the settings of the mat control and click hide incoming connections. There you go. I might need to move his tail in a little bit more. So let me do that. Something like that. And there you go. Okay, now his tail's moving. Okay, so now on the first frame of the footage, <laughs> your character should look kind of chopped like this. That's completely normal. To add some finishing touches, I'm going to get the nudge node. And if you don't have the nudge node, you can get it on Reactor or you can go to my server and it will be in the DaVinci effects page right here. So just get the nudge. And this works very similar to the liquify tool inside of After Effects. All you got to do is. All you gotta do is find this circle right here and drag it to your source and get this second this second marker and just position it and this will kind of warp your image easily instead of getting a bunch of puppet pins or good warps you could just easily do it like this this might be a little bit too intense so you can either keyframe strength or range softness either one if it just looks better for you then just do that so i'm gonna keyframe range softness so I can't really find the graph for the nudge softness. So I'm just going to manually crank it up like this. And that looks pretty smooth. Then if you want to make any additional changes to the character's pose, get the warper again, set it to points mode and just click around along the bones of the character. And this will kind of just like lock everything down in place. <laughs> that also looks cooked. <laughs> <laughs> and then once you make your adjustments, set your warp strength to one, go to around frame 20 or frame 15, put the warp strength back on zero and make a graph like this. And now if you followed all the steps correctly, 
you should have a nice manga animation with the whole character moving like that. And it should be extremely laggy for you. I'm using an RTX 4090 and it's pretty laggy for me. So it's most likely laggy for you. So to compensate for that, get yourself a saver node and connect that to the end of your comp. Browse and I'm gonna put this inside the pre-comp folder. Actually, wait. And put that in there. Go to the fusion tab and click render all savers. And now we sit back and wait. So after you've processed all your frames from the saver, press R and that'll create a loader node. And if you click R and nothing happens, that just means you need to get the nuke to fusion plugin and that will help you a lot. But if you don't have reactor and you're on like the free version or whatever, just type in load and click any of the frames and it will automatically load the whole image sequence so now we have this quick little animation here what we're going to do next is get a time stretcher node keyframe on frame zero and pretty much we're going to retime the and if you're familiar with how twixing works sorry and if you're familiar with how retiming works in davinci resolve we're pretty much going to be doing that whole process but on the manga animation and since davinci resolve has really really clean time remapping and retiming tools it's going to look really clean on this manga animation. So make sure you get your optical flow node, get a time stretcher node and set it to flow. Click all these options right here. Keyframe on frame zero. And you just want to retime the manga animation along with your song or whatever you're going with. So I wanted to put this part right here to last a little bit longer. So I'm going to do a graph like this and then I wanted to continue. Okay. So that is our manga animation in DaVinci Resolve. Now we're on the compositing part of the tutorial. 